This shirt might look cool to you. I build games. <laughs> but it's more like... I am homeless. In this documentary, I, Peter Prethovel, follow a young game developer called Lars. Or perhaps he's better known as Lars, with, with capital letters. Or some people call him Green Cream, but... Anyway, game developer Lars lives under quite unconventional circumstances. Of niet? Nee, ik kom alleen een paar shots opnemen en dan is het wel mooi geweest. In the beginning, my game Wapo was looking very hopeful. We expected it to sell thousands of copies, but it ended up only having like oh let's just let's just check Steam Spy, right? It's only 72 million. Ah. <laughs> uh, this is. <laughs> yeah, this is. This, this is all old. This is from before when it wasn't that bad, you know. It's, it's a saved tab that I always kept open to remember how, how it was. But anyway, if, if I refresh the page, you'll see the real number. Okay. Refreshing the page. Refreshing. It's, it's almost done. There, look, it's it's only it uh, it's it only has two owners. Wapo had only sold two copies in ten months. I was intrigued. Why would game developers spend so much time and effort into their work if they can't make a proper living? That made me wonder, how far would a game developer go? So, me and Thomas got a couple of friends together so that we could rent this office. And, you know, thinking it would all pay back, of course, while well, finishing Wapo, but... But it ended up taking me out financially so much that I had no other option than to live under my debt. What time is it? I release it. Twelve. Hold on, we'll finish this later. <laughs> hey, hey, man. Hey. Uh, hello. Yeah, this this Peter. Maak je niet druk. It's a YouTube channel. Yeah, I make funny films, What are the hardest parts about living in your office? Well. As you noticed, we're sitting here now, under my desk, and, you know, um, that's because there's a security system that goes on after 6 a.m., 6 p.m., and it's a motion sensor that's in the corner of the room, and if it detects any motion, it goes off, the alarms go off, and then I get caught. So after 6, we're basically stuck in this small space. I mean, it's, that's pretty rough. With your life being so depressing, what are the 
things that keep you going? Oh, um, usually on Saturday, this, this guy from two floors down, he, he comes here to work or whatever, and he comes with his bike, but he never locks it. So uh, sometimes I sneak outside and I borrow his bike. And uh, I like to go out in the forest and just, you know, go really fast and just bike somewhere and just enjoy the sound of nature and stuff. And... I like to just take his bike and just go fast, just, just go fast. Well, it sounds refreshing. Yeah. Should probably go to sleep on that note. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Right. Uh, you can stay in that corner. Oh, oh. Just don't just... move your arms out further than one meter. This should be good. Yeah. Sorry. There we go. If you get cold, um, just wait for the morning. It will be better. Yeah, one thing that's really hard is getting food. I always try to get enough food for the whole week on Monday because Monday there is a big organization. They always give a presentation and they always order food for the whole audience. I mean, I'm not invited, but it takes a while before the cleaners come after the presentation. So I always get in and try to stack up as much food as I can. Hey, uh, ik laat even Peter het uh, gebouw zien. Ja, uh, gaan we. Als, uh... Gathering food really makes it difficult to hide this whole thing. From, from my colleagues, I mean. I mean, why is that? Well, my lunch doesn't always look edible. Um, sometimes they give me a weird look, but I think I played it off pretty well so far. I, I don't think they have any idea that I live here. Lars, can I give you a few questions to your colleagues? Lars? Lars? Hey! Lars, ja, je doet wel een beetje vreemd naast tijd. Ja, ja. Ik, uh, ik zie me eigenlijk niet meer buiten, buiten kantooruren. Dus het lijkt alsof je gewoon s'avonds daar blijft. Of zo. Het lijkt alsof, alsof ik daar woont bijna. Ik kan er niet meer. Maar uh, het is echt. Uh, ik kan hier kan van, van die borrelletjes liggen. Het gaat een beetje zo rond zijn bureau gestrand. Zo s'avonds laten we klaar waren. Die volgende dag is gewoon weg. Het is gewoon persoonlijk interesse, nee, maar valt je iets op aan Lars? Ik ken hem nu al best wel lang en uh, er is van alles mis met hem hoor. I think you should tell your friends. <laughs> What do you mean tell my friends? I'm not, I'm not gonna tell my friends. You shouldn't tell him either. <laughs> ja, Lars! Lars! Daar zeg je me wat, Lars. Het is toch echt een hele leuke jongen. Dat is zo'n fantastisch harde werken. Iedere ochtend als ik hier binnenkom lopen, dan zit hij er gewoon al achter zijn bureau te werken. Als ik s'avonds weg ga, dan is hij er gewoon nog steeds. Hij blijft maar doorgaan. Ongelooflijk. Ik heb echt zoveel respect voor die jongen. Je maakt verder niks raars of zo. Raar? Ik zou niet weten wat. Het is gewoon een hele normale jongen. It was a surreal experience. But I believe my days with Lars have taught me some valuable lessons. Even if it's just that I should never become a game developer. 
However, spending my days in the presence of such a passionate and hopeful, sober person made me believe for a minute that it might actually all pay off in the end. I mean, the circumstances weren't exactly easy, but even I got to a point where I thought, this is fine. I can live with this. Well, that was the last night, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Did you have a good time? Uh, uh not really, no. Mm. It's Didn't it... you like Saturday? I thought Saturday makes up for a lot of it. Uh, I wouldn't call it fun. It's, it's, I mean, you're not yeah. really, not really my thing. Well, you know? Good night. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, hope good it night. will be a cool documentary. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be great. Really? 72 million. What have you been doing this year? <laughs> I know, I mean, I, I just never checked. I mean, you should probably get a really expensive car now. <laughs>